You're listening to the Incomparables Total Party Kill podcast, in which a group of friends play Dungeons and Dragons on the internet for your amusement. This is episode number 411, recorded December 2021, posted August 2023. Really split the party. Welcome back to Total Party Kill. It's me, Tony Sindelar, he, him, Dungeon Master here uh, to bring you yet more of Candlekeep Mysteries, specifically Candlekeep Chapter 3, Book of the Raven. Allow me to introduce our players, they will introduce their characters, and then I will remind you of what we are up to. Aline Sims, welcome back to Total Party Kill. Hello, I am playing Bell and Greybeard, the mountain dwarf fighter, <laughs> here to investigate some... Raven House stuff? Yep. Um, yeah, our pronouns are she, her. Thank you, Aline. I do think, you know, the mystery of Ca- Candlekeep Chapter 3, Book of the Raven, is will the adventurers go on a on a adventure just because a book a bird gives them a book? And so far the answer is yes. yes. And I really appreciate mm-hmm. that, everybody. Uh next <laughs> up, it's James Thompson. Hi, James. Hi, I'm playing Nyasa Nightweaver, who's a high elf rogue and uh who has the ability to psychically link with people, uh, which uh, is going to be interesting, I think. Mm, mm. Uh, also joining us, it's Monty Ashley. Hi, I'm Monty Ashley, he, him. I am playing Townley Mountain Taker, also he, him, a warlock in the service of the Queen of Air and Darkness. Ooh, spooky. Also, also, also joining us, it's Nick Scott. Welcome back to TPK, Nick. Thank you very much. And I am playing Girl, a human barbarian who's basically uh here to smash things cause havoc and generally just be a there to absorb damage and uh we are both he him thank you and last but certainly not least annette weirstraw i am playing um kakara who is a uh ranger era kokra of the raven sort so naturally i think there is nothing strange at all about taking adventures from ravens Mm -hmm. so uh you have followed a treasure map question mark as given to you by a raven a bird named haluth uh several days ago back in candlekeep the bird expressed that this map would lead you uh to the bird's house and that there were squatters there the bird needed taken care of and that was good enough for adventurers such as yourselves. You traveled through the wilderness, navigating uh, th- by some landmarks, uh, dealing with some troubles in the woods. You fought an ogre. You scared away a goblin. You confused some wolves. You murdered an owl bear. You know, just classic uh, adventuring, dealing with the woods things. And you have now arrived uh, at the outskirts of this kind of desolate house built in the middle of nowhere, kind of a gothic three-story stone structure. There does seem to be a graveyard. Uh, It looks pretty desolate. Uh, The windows on the first floor are all boarded up. Um, And I think we are discussing how you will proceed next. Uh, Just to give you the lay of the land, I've given you a map here. Uh, You can see there's kind of a, a gloomy graveyard to the south of the house. I've done the thing where the house is kind of shadowed out to because the map has the insides of the house. So you can't see it yet. There is a front door in kind of the uh, north east corner of the house. It seems to be the most obvious entrance to the house. Uh, the house is multiple structures and you do have a person that could fly. We get into complicated things in terms of where my maps are, but uh, that's my problem, not your problem. Um, what are you going to do as far as figuring out things next now that you've arrived at this strange spooky house so i had a possible idea to have a a, a stealth my way over and i want to try and look in one of the second floor windows okay so my idea is Mm -hmm. with the psychic blades basically i stick one in the wall stand Mm -hmm. on it put the other one in the wall slightly further up stand on that get rid Mm. of the previous one and then Mm. basically just work my way up how easy is it to balance on one psychic blade? Well, my dexterity is extremely very, high. Very good. So I, I'm i prepared to roll whatever dice okay. you uh, make me roll. Uh, anyone want to stop uh, Nyasa Night Reader from doing this? 
Look, I'm a rogue. I need to do rogue stuff. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent. I can't well, just while he's that. doing that complicated thing, I just fly to the roof. All right. <laughs> well, you check out the roof and I'll look in the window. Kakar, do you want to wait until he does that? And, like he spends like 20 wait. minutes climbing up and then you're like waiting at the top of the wall. Yeah, for him. I should do that. Like watch mm. him go up and then just I, I, fly this at the take last me 20 minute. minutes. This I will even like, tell I'm doing this at a run. I'm just going all right, up the all right. side of the building. And, and, now, yes, I mean, there's even, there's a couple, I'm going to help you out here. There's a couple places where there are like small trees that have grown up uh, next to the house. So you could even, you know, kind of, uh, kind of shimmy up some of those. So you're not, and you know, no. it's a house. It's not a castle wall. It's not like you're going to have to scale a fortification here. Um, I feel if I do it with the blades, it will look cool. And if I fall off, so be it. All right. Uh, now, to pick a side of the house that you want to climb. Uh, there do seem to be, I'll just tell you, there's windows on most sides of the house uh, at most levels. So, you know, you're going to see different things de- if depending I on where you go. into this sort of corner, um, mm-hmm. I can possibly check out two windows um, if the windows go up to the, the higher levels as well. All right. Give me, um, I think this is, uh, give me an acrobatics check to do your ridiculous uh, knife climb thing. Okay, doke. Thankfully, I'm plus five on acrobatics. Mm -hmm. Um, Is there a more compelling reason for this than I need to do rogue things? I mean, I can't think of. No, absolutely. No, I mean, like, (laughs) I think there's a certain need. He wants to look inside the window. Yeah, he doesn't want to to do that using cool rogue stuff. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) makes sense. I mean, and probably backflip off the top and land in, you know, Mm. when it comes down. All right. Uh, had no wasted motion. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm just checking out, because I do have another thing that if I mess this up, I can... Uh, yep. Okay. <laughs> I have a thing called a side-bolstered knack. If I mm-hmm. fail an ability check, um, which with a skill or tool that you have proficiency, you can roll one psionic energy die and add that number to the check. Sounds made so, up. Yeah. But... <laughs> Uh, just in case. Um, so acrobatics. Mm-hmm. Um, 17. All right. You scramble up the side of the house. Uh, some of your colleagues may be impressed or not. Uh, and kind of perch yourself there. And we'll say you find a nice little part where you can kind of peer in two different windows. There's kind of a weird tower circular protrusion on one corner of the house. So you're kind of peering in there and peering in the other one. Uh, give me a quick perception check. Uh, 16. All right. Looking uh, in the uh, window to the east, uh, Nyasa, you're looking into a large circular room, and it just looks like it is cluttered with junk. It looks like possibly the room you're looking into has had some structural issues because there's just like beams and timbers kind of that have kind of piled down in it. It looks like there was probably maybe some kind of staircase going up to an upper level that has completely collapsed into that room so that room looks like it is just full of jagged chunks of wood impossible to tell what the original uh function of that room might have been uh looking north um you kind of peer there's a a a window um that's like you know it was boarded up but they didn't do as nearly as diligent a job on the upper levels so you're there's just like there's a big crack and you can see uh all kind of a, a hallway running east to west and then it turns and heads north. It looks like it basically kind of runs the entire length of the uh, the house, uh, is what you can see on the second floor from your perch. Uh, would you like to descend? Well, yeah, I, I will uh, do a sort of backflip and then do this kind of superhero landing mm-hmm. with the one hand down. Such uh, a closer. And, and, and then walk over and say, no, nah, I couldn't see anything. Okay. Uh, Kakara, you wanted to fly up somewhere potentially? Yeah, you- I want to go to the roof. You said it was a bit thin in places. Yeah, you, you fly up roof. and you just, you fly. You don't have to do an acrobatics check to fly. So you fly up to the roof. Uh, there is one area that seems uh, particularly open. Uh, there's kind of, and it looks like it's probably above the section that uh, uh, Nyasa was looking into. Uh, there is okay. the kind of circular tower part of the uh the the structure has taken has had some severe s- structural damage to the roof possibly looks like not from wear and tear or old age but like i don't know some something happened um so yeah you can kind of look in through there and see uh kind of it, it's exposed to the elements uh a ruined upper story kind of loft uh area there 
Uh, you see that okay on the map that I've revealed to you? I can, yeah. There are other rooms and chambers on the third floor that the, the ceiling is intact for, so you would need to, like, go to them, I guess, to, to see them. Are the, are the windows open? Uh, you could probably find them. Yeah, you know, I, I would say definitely there are some windows that are open that are just okay. completely with no glass no and no boards up in them. Okay, uh, so I sort of peer in there. Yeah. I'm just going to reveal, let's say, you can see uh, some rooms up here. Uh, on the uh, there's it looks like there's another area that that does seem to be kind of more contained from the elements on the east side that you can't easily see in. Uh, but looking around uh, on the other rooms, it looks like there are probably what might have been servants' quarters in the past uh, with some very old a uh, ancient beds. One room looks like maybe it was storage, but it's all been kind of open to the elements and kind of trashed and not not you know not well maintained. Um, is what you see up here on the third floor of this desolate house. What okay. time of day is it? Uh, I think it's solidly uh, early afternoon. Okay. okay. I was going to say, I fly down and I tell everyone mm -hmm. that you've seen. it's like, it is quite a mess up there and appears so far I can see no um, squatters in this house. I wonder if we should try and remove all the... Uh, coverings on the windows in the bottom. Why don't we just go inside? We could just go inside. Mm. See what Let's happens. go inside. Yeah, but if it's full of vampires, <laughs> I wonder... Then now is the perfect time to do it. Mm -hmm. Yes, but it's dark because they've covered up the windows. I, I feel like we're not going to see a whole lot from the inside, or from the from the windows, so I think I, I would vote for going in the front door. But of course, I'm a barbarian, so what do you expect? Mm-hmm. We'll send you I mean, in first. Yeah, That's a good and point. You can always break down the the. We can just send you to the windows and have you break them down from the. Ooh. Inside. Neural. Mm -hmm. Neural. Yes. How would you like to go over there and kick that door open? I would love to do that. <laughs> It'll look cool. Go do it. <laughs> All right, Neural. You approach the front door. Um, it looks like uh this had a kind of ornate, fancy carved door, but somebody has put in place iron brackets. Uh, kind of sealing the door. Uh, it's like it's it's barred now, as if someone has kind of permanently tried to seal this place up. Um, so you could try and break those down, either just kind of kicking them in or using your weapons. It's going to require a substantial strength check uh, to get through these uh, reinforced doors. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try and just rip the door. Off the know, like, like the gate, yeah, basically. Yeah. So uh, it, it, is this fortification keeping us out or is it keeping people in it looks it looks <laughs> conspicuously as of a, a security measure for keeping people out of this house okay. more than keeping okay. things in kind of mechanism all right well i'm gonna do a strength check do it and i get 19 all right you manage to just kind of tear the gate off the hinges and kick in the door it you know it was not easy but you did it uh, and you are now looking into a uh, desolate-looking uh, cloakroom, kind of a you know an entryway into this uh, uh, this fancy house. Neural, uh, you're looking around. You see there's um, rusty iron hooks uh, lying the wall of this foyer. Um, next to the hooks, there's like a shovel and a rake. Uh, there's a dusty clay cloak draped over a hook next to a round-topped. Uh, door in the south wall so there are conspicuously doors leading uh east and south from this uh foyer or vestibule or entryway when you say rusty hooks like as in coat hooks or like as in spike hooks cook coat hooks not like okay. torture torture dungeon <laughs> murder hooks no <laughs> that's just in the basement kind of no, kind of us. kind of brass <laughs> or ornate uh hooks as if people would leave their cloaks and coats here Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm going to do just a quick, you know, check out the cloak, mm -hmm. you know, do a quick scout of the room, see if there's anything uh, mm -hmm. interesting in here. So, All right. You that. poke around. Uh, when you check the cloak, uh, some moths fly out of the the, uh, the pockets, uh, suggesting that it's probably been here for quite a while. But you do find a chunky uh, iron key in the pocket of the cloak as well. Oh, well, interesting. Turning to my compatriots, um, what next? Can I just really quick check these graves? Are they fresh? 
uh, Townley uh, heads off and looks at the uh, the, the graveyard. Uh, nothing about the graveyard seems fresh. Uh, it seems overgrown, okay. desolate, weedy. Looks like a family graveyard. Uh, there's a name worked into the iron uh, wrought iron fence around it. Uh, the name is uh, Brantifax, which you suspect is a uh, family name of the people who built this or owned this house. Thank you. Or the ravens that live there. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, uh, Neural, yeah, looking around, I, I think just based on how houses work and architectural cues, it seems like the door to the south might be st- stairs uh, down to a cellar, whereas the door to the east probably goes further into the interior of the house. Well, Neural, I think you've I'm... kicked in the door. You're leading the way. Yeah, I, I vote we go east. Uh, anybody have any questions? No, nope, let's do it. Nope. Yeah, I'm going to take the cloak and put it on just to look extra rosy. It's very kind of, it smell, you now smell like uh, like mold. <laughs> I, I, I take the cloak <laughs> I off. I tell you to take the cloak off. I, yeah. I take it take off and off. I put it back on the hook. It needs some, it, yeah, dry clean uh, would help here. All right, Neural, you head um, uh, to the east. Oh, sorry. Yeah, well, I was going to just like listen at the door first and oh. then... It is silent. It is silent, and then I will try just opening the door. Door is unlocked. It opens easily uh, into a kind of, looks like a den or a parlor. Um, Everything is, you know, dusty. You see lots of shapes, recognizable shapes of furniture covered uh, with drop cloths and sheets. Uh, There's a little bit of light uh, coming in through uh, kind of some cracks in the the northern wall, uh, some broken windows that are not completely boarded over. Lots of cobweb uh, stretching between, uh, you know, antlers and wolf heads mounted on the walls. Um, good number of hunting trophies here. Um, there's a, a pale rectangle behind, uh, above the fireplace, suggesting a, maybe a mirror or a portrait was hung there at one point. Uh, but kind of a fancy uh, looking den that it's all desolate and uh, cobwebby. Uh, you do see uh, there are several obvious exits to this room uh, in the southwest. It looks like there's a hallway uh, that goes. Uh, you see a, a door hanging open to the south. It looks like it might go to a kitchen. And there's also a strange little half flight of stairs uh, that goes up to some other room back to kind of the south um, west there. I bet we're going to have to end up going into the basement, which will be a giant dungeon. Um, I'm kind of thinking. I hopefully. I think that's a good or likely outcome. Uh, do we want to search the house or do we want to head down? I uh, Let's let's look inside all the rooms in the house to sh- make sure there isn't somebody up here. But let's not split up. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to head over here. I, I guess I'll just do a thorough digging around in the, the room, see if there's anything like the key. All right, you are poking around. Uh, you know, there is there's a fireplace, um, and there is in the kind of ash and embers of the fireplace, you pull out. Uh, it looks like somebody perhaps discarded there a, a a a pipe carved from a chunk of granite that somebody has left behind. A pipe carved Art. from a chunk. Yeah, of smoking granite. pipe, not a, uh, not a not a plumbing pipe. To gotcha. clarify, <laughs> um, I guess anybody who wants to take that, I'm not. Really I'll take it. Uh, that okay. seems like a Tanley kind of accessory. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go look down this hallway here. All right. The hallway uh, leads a short distance and into a kind of circular room at the base of this tower that takes up the, like one corner of the house. And it looks like here on the first floor, uh, this large room uh, serves as a dining room. Uh, so it's a big circular chamber, a couple boarded up windows around the the. the uh, air, uh, sides of the room, um, large oaken t- dining room table, six high back chairs. Uh, a lot of the chairs have kind of stag imagery on them. Um, there's a gaudy chandelier uh, hanging above the uh, the dining table. Uh, it looks like there's been some water damage in here. There's puddles of water and moisture uh, that have kind of seeped in uh, on the south side, uh, where you know the windows were broken, but and the boarded up. Uh, uh, windows presumably kept out uh, intruders, but not the elements entirely. Um, there's a very cold, empty-looking fireplace uh, on the south wall. Well, as as usual, I'm going to go dig around and see if there's anything sure. in this room of uh, interest. Okay. Uh, give me a quick perception check. Twelve. Yeah, you were poking around. There does not seem like there's anything of value here. What is here is all covered in pretty uh, thick 
uh, uh, layer of dust. It seems like this place has not seen any activity in quite some time. All right. Okay, I'm going to go uh, wander around and go through this other door on the other side into the kitchen space. All right. So, uh, Neural, you head into what you expected was the kitchen, and shocking surprise, it's a kitchen. Um, <laughs> the uh, you, a, a couple mice kind of scatter out of the way as you head into this room. Um, there's a hearth. It's got some, you know, it's black with soot. Uh, there's some ancient looking pots and pans on a stove. Um, it does seem like there's a little bit here in terms of cupboards uh, with, you know, cookware and uh, uh, plates and, and, and even some basic ancient leftover um, cleaning supplies. This room does not look as desolate as the dining room that you just explored. It seems like there's not that thick layer of dust on everything. Um, the same way the dining room was all right well uh i will give a Mm -hmm. thorough you know going through the countertops and doors and stuff and see what i can find give me a quick perception check natural one natural one uh you find a bunch of dirty dishes and based on the fact that the food has not like completely you know been eaten away by mice or turned into you know just grime seems like evidence that somebody ate a meal here uh, or at least brought dirty plates from a meal here somewhat recently but you don't find anything of interest with a natural one Uh, anybody else want to have a look around i'll have a a, a go yeah just a poke around sure 23 well 20 all right Ah. you are poking around uh 20 niasa you find uh there's several cast iron pots in a cabinet and you decide to poke your head and and look in them uh and they seem somebody seems to have stashed uh their rations uh there's some very basic uh kind of dry rations stored in a big cast iron pot that seems a little unusual but um also seems like it's something that someone put here recently as opposed to decades ago um you are poking around and uh, uh, Townley and you find uh, like an ancient looking um, cookbook uh, propped up on a shelf uh, in, in one of the cabinets. And as you open it, uh, the kind of contents of the cookbook just kind of fall out into your hand. Uh, it does not seem to be a cookbook, but like the shell of a cookbook. And you have in your hand uh, a stack of paper money of currency that is completely unfamiliar to you. What uh, language is the paper money in? Uh, roll perception. Okay. I should re- perhaps remind oh. you as I go to roll perception that I can read all languages. Okay. Excellent. 20. Uh, this seems to be some variant of Elvin. Uh, and, you know, it, it. you are even able to figure out kind of what the denomination is. Hard to know what the conversion rate is. This could be a lot of money, a very small amount of money, or a medium amount of money. Uh, the idea of paper money is i think foreign to you <laughs> right we we do the sensible thing which is carry around tens of thousands of gold pieces <laughs> yep. you are unbanked um yeah so but there, there, there seems to be there is an they refer they seem to be uh you you can read the kind of strange elven script on them uh, it seems to be kind of like a variant of elven either like a dialect or a, perhaps whether it's just one that you've not experienced or one from long ago uh but it seems to be kind of you know, like basically these are promissory notes from some kind of banking house in a elven city or town unfamiliar to you. Does Nyasa okay. have any um, input into this? Uh, Nyasa, you look at it. This is you've never seen anything like this before. Well, anyway, cool hollow book. Yeah, the book, <laughs> yeah. though, the book kind of it doesn't, you know, it it. <laughs> It it was more like like it was not a very well constructed hollow book such that you're not sure if it would fool anyone now that it's been taken off the shelf again. Yeah, I mean, let me tell you, when you hollow out books and store things in them, some people take that badly. Yeah, well, it depends whether you do it in a library or a desolate house in the middle of nowhere. Context <laughs> matters, James. <laughs> Can I read any of the cookbook? Uh, the cookbook appear based on the the only the only kind of parts of that are intact that are left is the covers, which appears to be in common. Uh, it seems to be it's a little kind of uh, worn away, but it seems to be like forty seven ways to prepare uh, elk. Okay, and how old is the book? Uh, it seems to be about one hundred and twenty five years old, based on the uh, publication date in the inside cover. I am going up because I like to go up that okay. little stairway. 
and see what's at the top of that those stairs. All right, that stay they open into a little uh room. I'll just say that you you listen quietly and then peek your head into the room. Um this appears to be a parlor. Um there is like a fancy table in the center of it. Uh, There's some overstuffed chairs kind of wedged into this room around it. It's kind of a crowded room. Uh, there is a cabinet uh, along one wall uh, that seems to be, uh, n- you know, intact and full of little uh, decanters and wine goblets. Um, there's a harp in one corner um, and a staircase in the northeast corner heading to the second floor. It seems like in, in, one, in the uh, south east corner of this room is kind of a pile of sheets i rummage through those pile of sheets give me a rummage check that's perception i rolled a 20 there is nothing in the sheets uh but with a 20 you feel confident that you can conclude that these sheets somewhat recently unclear how long probably were placed over the uh chairs Mm -hmm. and that somebody uncovered them to make use of them uh can i also look at the liquor cabinet maybe the harp as well um yeah, there's a liquor cabinet. I'm I, rummaging uh, through it. I'm going to grab one of the goblets and just kind of like tap it on the wall. And It, uh, does it, it makes break? a... No, it makes a nice kind of ding noise. Oh, it's, it's glass. Yeah, I, okay. I, I think so. I, I don't know what goblets are made of. <laughs> uh, lead crystal. <laughs> oh, okay. It's lead crystal. It makes a ding noise instead of a ding. How's that? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I just set it back. Yep. Uh, yeah, there is a uh, a glass decanter of several kind of amber-looking uh, liquids. No labels, uh, Kakara, but, you know. I'm going to take a sip out of one of the decanters. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> it's it's oaky. Uh, it is very aged. Uh, I think that makes it better. I don't know enough about alcohol to do this part of the adventure. Oh, I need an adult. Does it have a good, um, uh, <laughs> does it have a good stopper in it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I know what that is. Okay. Yeah. So... I don't I'm know if this is a good plan. Backpack. Okay. I don't know if this is a good plan, but we have that whole container of poison with the poison fish. We put that in the decanter. We go Do you, away. You have a poison fish in a container. Okay. <laughs> well, we we squeeze the poison fish into. So you want to the... like just randomly poison someone? No, well, not somebody. Whoever's living here, so that we poison it. Just what if no one is living here. That ra- this is an empty house. It's time for we address this. No. That raven is crazy. <laughs> I I, I just imagine obvious. after after the after you've dealt with whatever people live in this house, the adventure is ended. The raven comes back to his living room and reclines in the chair, pours himself a drink <laughs> from the poisoned. <laughs> Get, gets this gets gets there was tr- gets ready to write a nice personal check to the adventures and then this takes map a let us <laughs> this map led us here said there was treasure there's not treasure this raven led us here saying there were people here there's not people this, there, there's two things leading us here both of them lies there we is could signs just that... become the squatters and move in maybe the and not raven... poison the booze but just start drinking it that maybe raven the raven was another... a seer and foresaw us taking over this house. <laughs> To self and decided to hire us to. I mean, it's, your, it's a grandfather paradox, but yeah. I haven't I haven't read all the players' handbook. Presumably, it ends at level three. So yeah, this is the time to settle down. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the, it's obvious that there have been people here recently. Recently, uh, that, within the last hundred years, it yes. seems like somebody well, was somebody, like somebody was cooking in the kitchen. Yeah, somebody recently uncovered these armchairs and put the sheets in the corner. Some parts of the house extremely desolate, not touched in. Decades, if not, I don't know. This this is a Goldilocks situation at best. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but there's going to be three bears in the basement. Then you are now faced with the birds evidence. or the bears. You are now faced with the ethical dilemma of: Do you go upstairs in the evil haunted house or downstairs at the evil haunted house? I think we should peek up. upstairs yeah. and then go downstairs. Yeah, we'll yeah. scope out the up. Agreed. Uh, up. And then we'll go into the torture basement. It could just be a basement. <laughs> Well, this this is going to be a very short adventure, then. <laughs> Tony, any basement could be a torture basement if you have the right attitude. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Monty. <laughs> so there is off of the parlor a uh, set of stairs that go up. I'm also revealing part of the map that uh, Nyasa previously looked at through a window. So the uh, stairs, short flight of stairs going up to the second floor of the house. Uh, there is a kind of skinny 
hallway here that seems to kind of cut through the house. Nyasa, this lines up with what you saw before. Um, there are several doors and a turn off of this hallway. Um, up to you what you will want to explore first. I'm going to go just wander into this uh, space up here. Okay. Uh, Neural, you turn the corner in the hallway heading west and look in. This looks like um, perhaps, uh, like you know, it's small. Maybe it was like a guest room or something. It's not very fancy. Um, it looks like uh, this bedroom has not been disturbed in quite some time. Thick layers of dust, cobwebs covering everything. There's a narrow bed, moldy mattress on it. Um... There, at one point, would have been an elegantly carved headboard. Uh, there's an, a wooden dresser with kind of one half of the doors hanging open, nightstand, empty coat rack, uh, what have you. Do you want to poke around in here? Yeah, I'm going to go check out the nightstand and All any right. other under the bed. And perception. I like to think that you just lift the bed up one-handed. Mm. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly it. 18. 18. You're poking around, you lift the bed up one-handed. Uh, in the kind of dust uh, under the bed, something perhaps I don't think you expected to see there. Um, there's an ice cube. A cube of ice. You know, ice cube sized. Lying on the floor under the bed. Okay, this is very suspicious. <laughs> this is strange yeah. to you because it is not in a pool of water. It is not particularly it... cold in this room. Um, but there is, yeah, there's an ice cube there. Well, we've got booze downstairs. Hmm. It's true, we do. Um, if I do, like, who's better at Arcana than I am? Pretty much anybody could be. Uh, uh, minus I'm, one. I'm okay at Arcana. I am not okay at it. No healers, no wizards. These are the rules we live by. <laughs> 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 Wait, no. Uh, Townley's a warlock, right? Well, yeah, but I don't study magic. Oh, I just get magic. You just get it. From the Queen of Erin Dark. Oh, got, got it. I cannot emphasize it. Le leg but legacy admission. Got it. <laughs> but I am actually proficient in it. Oh, so okay. what am I looking at? You want to look uh, at this, this ice, cube? ice cube? The ice cube, yeah. Hmm. I will focus my magic eyes on the ice cube. All right. And roll an eight. All right. Uh, this is, as far as you can tell, Townley, a magic ice cube that does not melt. That somebody has left under a bed. <laughs> That's cool. That is cool. I mean, this let, is a useful by, item. By definition, yes, it is cool. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm to ignore that voice that just appeared inside my head. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is just a magical non-melting ice cube, guys. Just a perfectly normal magical non-melting ice cube. Just That's your everyday variety. Of you keep yes. under your bed. Non-melting ice cube. Well, yes, I, somebody should huh. take that because. Mm -hmm. I want it. Can I, may I have it? Go ahead. All sure. Right. And if we find you frozen solid mm. uh, next morning, mm -hmm. then... Sorry about your luck. Then what? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I didn't really have a second half of that. <laughs> so long, and thanks for the poison fish. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just another one of these strange quest items that we will have to use at some point. Yep. Is, mm -hmm. there, is there a door to the west of me? Uh, there is a door. There's even there's a hallway and a uh, set of stairs, a spiral set of stairs. And I'm just going to reveal this part of the map. It look, you know, there's a, a door hanging open to a similarly shambly guest room to the west of this one. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to dig around. Lift yeah, give me up. a quick perception check. Uh, Eleven. This room seems identical to the room you just searched, except it does not have a, a magic ice cube under the bed. Oh, this is clearly the substandard room. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Okay, I'm going to go check out this area that uh, to the south of me. Okay. There's a door over here on the hallway. Uh, okay. And, you know, I think this area is not very well secured, so I think there's a lot of doors that are just kind of hanging open or at least a jar that you could poke your head into. Uh, this seems to be a the kind of the master bedroom uh, here on the second floor of the chalet of this house. Uh, spacious bedroom, walls decorated with wainscoting i totally know what that is mm -hmm. <laughs> um and rusty oil lamps there's a four poster bed uh against the south wall the bed posts are carved to look like stags and wolves um opposite the bed is a stone hearth with a black marble mantle that has a pair of elk's antlers mounted above it 
There's a bare, dust-covered writing desk on the west wall. A um, pair of tall windows <laughs> flanked by burgundy drapes and partially boarded over. Um, there's a wardrobe. Uh, and there's an empty dog kennel in the southeast corner. When you said a bear writing desk, I thought it was yeah. a yeah. <laughs> no, it's no. not. It's like, that's amazing. <laughs> No, Is it's it the boring. Desk it's for a bear. Or it's the, it, it, I love that multiple of you went there. No, it's the boring version of the bear writing desk. Oh. <laughs> bear and empty. A desk for writing two bears. Got it. Uh, Got it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. Well, uh, I'm going to go dig through the what we have a writing desk and yeah. there's a closet and there was a dog kennel and under mm-hmm. a bed and that raven reminded me of the writing desk. Oh, mm. good. Uh, I'll have a poke through the desk. All right, give me some perception check for people poking around. Oh, uh, I got an 18 looking at the desk. Yeah, you go through. It looks like somebody has intended to have cleared out this desk. Uh, there's really nothing left in it, not even your kind of basic uh, things that you would expect to find as far as stationary or whatnot. But you do, in going through one of the drawers, uh, uh, Nyasa, you find perhaps it was like caught between the drawers or something like that, a sheet of paper. Uh, and I'm assuming you will want to pull it out. No, of course. Uh, it is a instructions on how to make a paper hat. Uh, potentially that you could make using the piece of paper the instructions are. They're illustrated instructions uh, on. <laughs> I, I, I make the paper hat. Uh, roll, roll sleight of hand. Okay. Sleight of hand. I have not bad. Plus three. Uh, I got a natural 20. It is an amazing hat, people. Um, you are the <laughs> envy on... of all your friends. Gain one level of hat. I put it on top of the other hat that yes. I am still wearing from when mm-hmm. we got the hats last time. Uh, uh, when I see the hat, I give you a feather <laughs> to put in your hat. Oh, oh very nice. Mm. Neural, did you want to roll perception as you're poking around in this uh, master oh, I, bedroom? I did. I got eight. <laughs> eight. Uh, yeah, you are... Not seeing anything, you know, you kind of poke around all the furniture. Um, the bed is uh, kind of bolt into the room, which is a little strange. It's bolted to the floor, but you're peeking in and around everything else. I got a 16. Yeah. Uh, 16, uh, uh, Bellin. Uh, yeah, and I was looking like mostly in the closet area. Mm-hmm. You are poking around. You are not seeing anything too exciting in the uh closet area uh it looks like it's been cleared out it's just dust uh in one little kind of crevice of the wardrobe uh you find a uh it's impossible to know how long this has been here possibly it's got a thick layer of dust on it a brass prosthetic nose (laughs) we did find still have the hand hand. yeah those were quite a ways apart (laughs) Um, in they sure d- were different but homes, a, but it is a coincidence. <laughs> but if we put the pipe in the hand, mm-hmm. if, and the ice cube in the nose. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm, I'm just sad. It sad as Frosty the Snowman I've ever seen created. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm interested I, in this bed being bolted. Yeah, down. yeah. I, I want. Um, I want to try to flip it. All right. Do you want to try to flip it with me? Yeah, sure. I'll. Uh, I'll grab What's it. What's your strength? And, I mean, I probably have the tools to unbolt it, but, you know, feel free to what just fun rip is it off. That? Ripping it out it seems more fun. Yeah, I'll stand back. I'm going to move back to here next to Downway. It actually, can is it possible to actually look under it or is it just goes... Oh, right yeah, you've looked ground? under it. It's just dusty okay. and gross under it. What's your strength modifier? I'm um, just... Uh, plus three. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to flip it. Will you help me? Yes. Okay. okay so does that I'm... give me advantage? It time? does. Okay. Okay. Because I have a plus five, so you've got to be kidding me. Oh no! I rolled a one and a nine. Uh, <laughs> so um, what's your nine modify to? Is it just a nine? Fourteen. Fourteen. You are trying, and as you kind of try and flip the, it, you're flipping a four poster bed, <laughs> Bellin. Um, like <laughs> three of the parts of the bed, three of the posts, kind of like wrench and twist as you're doing it and one of them seems much more kind of like i don't know if it's load bearing or secured or built into the structure of the house but that seems suspicious uh so yeah one one corner of the bed has kind of got your attention um compared to the others that 
you know, we're we're bolted Can down. You rotate but it. You could try. Sure. Yeah, I'll try. I'll point it out to Neural and be like, that that site is resistant. Okay, so let's focus on that area and see if we can force it to turn. All right. Okay. I don't think you need to roll anything for it, given how uh, specific that was. Uh, the uh, the bed, the, the the one of the posts of the bed uh, kind of rotates, and a wall on the south side of the bedroom cranks open, revealing a large circular room beyond. So uh, I'm just going to go through the secret door. Okay. And into this area which we've seen before but we haven't yes. dug around in. So uh Nyasa kind of looked into this room uh from uh before from the uh, uh from from the window. This appears like it might have been some kind of like loft or something like that but it's not in good shape. Maybe there was like I don't know, Neural, you're looking around and it's like was there like an explosion here or something or did something hit the top of the house? There is like a gaping hole in the area above you can see that like the the third floor is relatively visible above you um there's what's left of kind of a curved wooden staircase leading up to that it's rather treacherous because a decent part of that staircase is now part of this room that has collapsed into it uh some stuff is still darkened with soot there's all kinds of timbers that have fallen down Mixed in with that is maybe some furniture that used to be on the the room above that has collapsed in here and combined with the furniture that was in this room. So just all kinds of timber and lumber and wood uh, jotting out in all kinds of angles. It's hard to even know what this room might have done or served or originally as some kind of function. Um, you are free to root around in the just piles of timber here. Great way to get tetanus. Yep. Um, so... <laughs> I'm gonna do it anyways. So all right, I'm dig around, see what I, what can be found. Yep, and I roll a twelve. All right, uh, you're digging around and you find an object. It looks like it might have been concealed here. Like it's like you push aside a thing and there's like kind of like a little hollowed out area of the um, mess. Uh, and there is a stone uh, figurine here. It's about six inches tall. I'm gonna show you some art for this. If you see a big description of it below this, please don't scroll down and read that. Uh, but there's a strange uh, six-inch tall sculpture. Maybe it's made out of stone. Are we allowed to know the name of it, which is on top of yeah, the Yeah, it's fine. Or... Uh, some of you uh, w might recognize with a religion check the, the uh, creature that is depicted here. But there is the, the, the sculpture seems to depict a strange kind of demonic-looking creature with you know goat horns and a fearsome snout and bat wings and this kind of muscular demon goat thing is carrying in one hand a rod with a skull on top of it and in its other hand uh three uh heads that he's carrying by the hair and his legs are uh cloven hooves uh yeah neural i mean i don't think you have to be a cleric to know that everything about this little six inch statue is uh super creepy did somebody oh, I... nearby roll a religion check? <laughs> I did, but I got a two. I got a seven. Uh, two uh, y y seems like bad. It's the Queen of Air and Darkness. Is, you, <laughs> you are confident, uh, Townley, that it is not the Queen of Air and Darkness. You're not sure. Where, that's where, that's where your, uh, your pantheon ends. <laughs> it's not that. Uh, Neural, you are looking at it, and it's like, well, whoever this guy is, he's not one of the like happy-go-lucky gods. Uh, I'm liking it. I like this. <laughs> I'm gonna. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna. How is it big enough? I can just like. It's a six-inch tall it? sculpture, so it's not that tall. Oh, or not that big. I'm gonna. I'm gonna Fits in a bread box. I think. I don't know how big bread, my, uh... bread boxes are. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna stick it in my backpack. All right. Anyone else? Uh, so Townley, you were in here looking at it, failing to recognize uh, who it is. Nyasa, you've creeped yeah. into the room. I, uh, Kakara, that staircase. Uh, is the staircase good enough that I could dex my way up it? Um. It would be precarious, but you could try. I'll try. There's the other staircase, the spiral one. <laughs> there is a, another spiral staircase over here that seemed much more structurally intact. There's also a room uh, as yet unaccounted for here on I, the second floor. I want to go into this unexplored room. Okay. You peek your head in uh, into that room. Uh, Kakara, you are looking around. Uh, this appears to be uh, like a study. Uh, there's a handsome roll top desk. Um, there's some padded leather armchairs. Um, there's a fireplace. 
lots of things with wolves and stag imagery carved into wood and whatnot. Uh, draped over each chair is a wolf pelt. Uh, and there is also a narrow spiral staircase uh, choked with cobwebs heading uh, up to the third level from this room as well. Um, okay, I'm going to rummage in this desk. Mm. Uh, you rummage in the desk. Give me a quick perception check. Nine. Uh, you are rummaging in the desk. You find a nice set of uh, calligrapher supplies. It looks like whenever they moved out, someone didn't really check this desk very carefully. Um, there is a, uh, in one of the drawers, there is a leather uh, journal with a stylized wolf head on the front cover. Um and these uh, the aforementioned calligraphy supplies. Um, I, can I look at the journal? Is there something written in it? Or oh, yeah. It... You flip through it. It's, somebody has maintained this journal. Um, mm. Do you want to spend a little bit of time Ooh. reading the journal? I do want to try to read it. Yeah. Second book of the adventure, people, if you kind of journal as a book. which I... <laughs> Third. Was... That cookbook counts. Oh, th- <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Townley. <laughs> um, so this uh, this book... Uh, seems to be the, uh, the 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 regular journals uh, of a woman who uh, visited this uh, chalet that her family owned uh, repeatedly. Um, she married into the Brantifax family, um, and she and her children and her husband would have occasionally come to this uh, hunting lodge to get away from life in the big city and spend uh, some quiet time. Her husband, Baron Brantifax, is very into hunting. She's doesn't think very highly of that. Um, but, uh, you know, she likes that the, the hunting lodge makes him happy as well. Uh, the, she talks about uh, the family dog, uh, Brorn, um, uh, who seems to be almost as beloved as the children. Um, the, the Baroness who, who kept this journal, you know, it, it's, it looks like she adds to this every time she visits the chalet, which seems to happen uh, some frequency over the years. Uh, she prefers the hustle and bustle of the city to the kind of spooky isolation of the chalet. It's just a little too far from civilization. Uh, she talks about bringing her, her children here. Uh, her, her first child, uh, Sylphine, uh, was kind of uh, sickly and uh, confined to the bed a lot. Um you know that the, the Baron did hope that the kind of the clean air of the of the woods would be good for her, and they talked about hiring a nursemaid to to to, to uh, um, take care of of, of Sylphine. But that unfortunately, uh, there's a later entry. Sylphine died at the age of uh, of, of six. Um, then she talks. She also talks about their the younger daughter, uh, a name named uh, Haluth, um, and how much Haluth takes after her father and loved to go uh, on hunting trips with her father. Um, but that sadly Haluth as well, uh, died in a tragic Mm -hmm. hunting accident, uh, killed by a wolf when she was nine. Um, you know, these things happen in the, uh, the dangerous world and it could have just as some, probably not wolf attack, but things could happen just as easily, uh, in the, uh, in the, in in the city. Uh, it's a a dangerous world to raise children in, uh, says the Baroness. Um, the, the one of the later entries uh the baroness is unhappy that the baron has insisted uh that the daughters are both have been buried here at the chalet in the graveyard um in the final entry the baroness speaks of evil whispers in the graveyard and uh vows never to return to the chalet i um keep the journal but also um am prepared to relay these tidbits to my friends well we never checked out the graves so i checked them out oh that's Mm -hmm. true and nobody tried to eat you so no yet Uh, well shall we just keep going up keep going up i'm gonna go up the stair right beside me all right i follow i'm gonna go up the stair because (laughs) nobody wanted to see my acrobatics so we are splitting (laughs) up i always want to see your acrobatics i guess technically you're splitting the party we are technically splitting the party. Yeah, but it's like just a corridor. What could go wrong? What could go <laughs> wrong indeed? Words. For answers to questions such as these, let's play another few minutes of Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> I wanted to go up the stairs that were in the tower. Okay. That, those will be treacherous, but you're welcome to try. Thanks. I was going to do that. 
Well, but you didn't. You went somewhere else. Just because I was standing said, here. <laughs> be sensible. Don't do the acrobatics. There's, I was standing here waiting for you to go, do and you went to a different you, stairs. So now I'm doing. There's it. there's <laughs> enough <laughs> stairs for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, so the upper areas of the uh, the the chalet uh, are have some uh, serious kind of structural. Uh, issues with them it does seem like uh you know there's there's holes in the roof particularly large one uh over the tower in the southeast corner uh so a little bit more exposed to the elements uh than than the other parts uh nyasa you emerge at the top of one set of stairs with bell in uh you you're in what looks like it was probably at one point um servants quarters uh the gaping holes in the roof here Clay tiles from the roof itself have kind of clattered down into this room. Uh, splinters of woods that uh, splinters um, from wooden beams, leaves, even some bird droppings uh, cover the floor. Um, and uh, the the rafters have several birds' nests uh, formed out of twigs and straw in them. A familiar-looking raven looks down at you from a hole in the roof and then flaps away. Uh, there are two wooden bed frames in, on the north wall. Um, there's a wooden storage trunk sealed with a rusty padlock. Um, and there's some tall, narrow wardrobes. On the other side of the house, at the very same time, cut back and forth to make it seem more dramatic than it actually is, uh, Neural and Kakara uh, emerge in what looks like uh, it was perhaps some kind of uh, nursery. This part of the uh, roof, at least, is very intact and more uh, protected from the elements. Uh, dust blankets everything. Stone hearth in the middle of the north wall. Uh, there's a mirror and a, an oval rug on the floor. There's a bed size for a young child, a rocking chair, a shelf lined with dolls under a thick layer of uh, dust, a wash basin. Um, there's some stuff for, for, for a child in the corner, a small wooden cradle, a wooden playpen, uh, a window box, um, a mobile uh, made of colorfully painted fish uh, positioned above the playpen. Uh, yeah, looks like this was a nursery where a child or baby uh, would have been kept up here in the actor. I tapped the mobile, and, and there's no door between the two. It's not. It does not. Sides. Does not look like uh, mm. this room connects over to the other side of the. Uh, we uh, the we third did floor. split the party. You did you split did. the party. I yell, "Hey!" through the wall. Uh, Nyasa, well, you hear someone yell, "Hey!" in a suspicious voice. Uh, Townley, uh, you climb yes. up the stairs in the spiral staircase. Uh, this looks like, you know, it's again, hard to tell what would have happened here. Uh, there's like jutting lumber, um, all kinds of, of, of junk here. Um, there's, there does look like there is some stuff that is still somewhat intact on the third, on the third floor here, like just pushed up against one wall. Uh, it looks like there's a, a locked wooden chest. It's lid has been scorched, but the chest itself, uh, it was heavy duty and is intact. So. I shout out, I got a mimic. <laughs> <laughs> and Townley, see, importantly, this part of the third floor does not seem to connect to the other parts of the third floor. So yeah, you've really split up. Good job. You've <laughs> really split everyone. Uh, Nyasa and Bellin, there is another room south of where you are. Um, it's similar to yours in that the, like, the, the ceiling has been broken away in parts. And it looks like this was probably a storage room. Old chairs, tables, benches, hunting trophies, rolled up rugs. Uh, all kind of crammed in here and covered and starting to kind of rot away in the exposure to the element. Um, looks like there might be some framed pictures and mirrors wrapped in sheets stacked in one corner. So you've split up. What does the different people want to do in your different creepy parts of the attic? Well, I've got a locked chest, so mm. I'm going to actually use, do rogue stuff and mm. try and open it. Check for traps. Well, yeah. <laughs> don't listen to him <laughs> are you a mimic now uh give me a yes. lockpick attempt nyasa to get into this ancient trunk somewhere a barbarian with a chunky lead key has thoughts <laughs> well i rolled uh 19 plus whatever i add to that. all right you managed to pick the lock of this uh the the heavy chunky padlock uh on this storage trunk do you want to open the storage trunk Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, you open the trunk, and it looks like this was where Baron Brantifax may have stored his hunting uh, materials, equipment. There is a suit of studded leather armor, uh, sized for a somewhat portly adult human, a leather helm, a heavy crossbow, 
uh, a wooden case with the monogrammed BB uh, and some um, hunting traps. Uh, the wooden case uh, looks like it has fancy crossbow bolts with crimson fletching in them. Well, I'm I'm going to take the helm and certainly the crossbow and the bolts. Okay. <laughs> That'll be your third hat. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 this is the whole thing. It's like hats on hats on hats. Mm. And, and a wig. the turducken of hats. I have got a blonde wig on as well. Just... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, Above one of the hats. It's Bellin... like a hat and then a wig. <laughs> yeah. Then... Bellin, so what would you do like me to be doing there is hat madness? <laughs> do I get any AC bonus for this? Um, I don't hat? think so. Ducking? Well, I just <laughs> take it off and throw it on the ground. All right. <laughs> um, I think I want to look in this. Once I see that Nyasa is okay the trunk was not a mimic at least as far as we can tell the hat might um, be. so far the hat might be um i want to look into the in the storage room um and um i want to see if there's anything of value in here okay uh, uh you are poking around give me a perception check i forgot how to read for a second mm-hmm. i couldn't find it <laughs> um i got a five you know, it, it looks like probably the stuff they stored up here was even perhaps less nice than the stuff that was kind of in active use. Uh, you do flip through. There's a stack of paintings in the corner uh, that perhaps they would take them down in preparation for boarding up the house. Uh, one painting depicts three deer grazing on a hill. Uh, another one shows a gray mastiff with a duck in its mouth. Uh, a third depicts an armored human knight on a hippogriff. That looks pretty badass. Um, and uh, the fourth is a portrait of... Uh, of the Brant, uh, the Brantifax family, uh, Baron Brantifax is seated in a chair. There's a gray mastiff sleeping at his feet, wife standing at uh, his side. Uh, Baron Brantifax is kind of a stout, well-dressed man. Looks like he might have been in his 50s. The time the painting was commissioned, there's some bags under his eyes. Uh, the Baroness is kind of a tall, thin woman, also in similar age. Um, one of her hands is kind of resting gently on the Baron's shoulder. Uh, while the other one grasps a small bouquet of roses. Um, There's no children depicted in the painting. Uh, Meanwhile, over in the nursery, Kakara, Neural, would you like to be doing anything? I am going to give a thorough searching. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I will help rummage through things. Staying away from the dolls. No creepy dolls. Neural, are you staying away from the dolls? No, I am not. All right, Neural, you, uh, you, uh, Kakara, you're looking around. There's a bunch of kind of ancient playthings from a child that have are coated with decades of dust here. Uh, uh, Neural, as you kind of knock aside a shelf full of dolls, looking for things around it, the the image of a of a of a young uh, girl kind of flashes across your eyes. She looks pale, deathly white, and kind of in pain. I express that i've seen this to kakara and And i say keep away from those creepy dolls this place is haunted i don't know i'm i'm like i feel like i need to do something Uh, (laughs) i don't know what though meanwhile in the south tower townly you have climbed to the top of these treacherous steps uh the tower is all kind of blown out from some kind of disaster that happened in the past uh i did mention that there was kind of a charred um uh chest here at the top of the stairs anything you want to do uh the first thing i'm gonna do is cast mending on the steps okay does mending cover uh, objects as big as steps no but you do one step at d- a time <laughs> yeah basically okay um a single break or tear in an object no longer th- no larger than one foot in any dimension okay nah, that, never mind doesn't work you fix one step hey well we got to start I, somewhere I will, people uh eldritch blast this chest all right you eldritch blast the chest um the chest was unlocked um and so <laughs> the 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 lid kind of <laughs> rattles open with the force of the uh the the, the eldritch blast you want to open the chest now yes all right uh inside the chest um it looks like there's a variety of components and uh kind of l- Elements for making various magical items. You see a lot of trinkets, uh, maybe some potions uh, in uh, little uh, kind of dividers uh, in places here. 
all kinds of like little sparkly things that catch uh, your attention, uh, Townley. Um, uh, and as your kind of eyes are kind of gazing over these, perhaps with wonder and excitement, uh, you hear the sound of perhaps feathers, perhaps of flapping, uh, and whirl around to see that several creatures have entered the uh, tower from the, the hole in the ceiling. Four bird-like creatures look down at you, and uh, and, the, and one of them speaks to you. Those don't belong to you. Okay. Um, do you guys know who made this map? Do these creatures know who made the map? Are they going to murder Townley for splitting off from the rest of the group? What do they know about the spooky ghost child over in the nursery? For answers to questions such as these, tune in next time to Total Party Kill.